Can I be excited about this next one for us? Yeah, take it away, Brig. Listen, I'm so excited to talk about the Detroit Tigers because I have had a sneaking suspicion that something fun was happening in Detroit uh, starting about five, five months ago. Maybe, maybe midway through last season, I started looking at them and thinking, you know, there's more going on there than just Miggy retiring and, you know, getting all his records set. Turns out I'm not the only one feeling this way. The Detroit Tigers have signed Colt Keith, Colt Keith, to a six-year contract. The reason this is interesting is because very few people outside of the Tigers organization know who Colt Keith is. He <laughs> doesn't. He hasn't even made his MLB debut yet. Okay, that's a big deal. They signed this guy who spent some time in AAA last year and additional time in AA last year. They're like, dude's a phenom, so we're going to sign him. He's an infielder. He's the Tigers' number two prospect. He's 22 overall in MLB prospects, and they signed him. Just They're like, whatever, you're getting a deal. It's six years, two, uh, $28.6 million. There's a $2 million signing bonus. There's some escalations, various options in his contract that bring it to a potential nine-year $82 million deal which would be amazing for everyone involved. Um, super duh. If he's worth it. Right. That, it, yeah. It, it, if he is, if he turns out to be the guy they think he is, this is an absolute steal. Oh yeah. <laughs> this like, is no, this is way, this is way more of a steal than the Braves are getting on Acuna right now. Like, oh, for sure. And that is banana <laughs> steal. <laughs> it's banana. Like it's, it, it's so crazy to me. It's like they went to this kid and they're like, you want to make a few extra bucks? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, that's a lot of money. It sure is. Yeah. yeah, it is. <laughs> like, yeah. But this is the thing, too, is that is this is a six-year deal, right? So that gets yeah. him through, through his first three arbitration. years. Gets yeah. him through his arbitration years. That's he doesn't right. worry about any of that stuff. Nope. And and this is the thing. This is the thing that always blows my mind, too. Right? It's like we're saying this is a steal. Brig. I would do so much to make that kind of money. Oh, <laughs> year, yeah, right? of course. Like that $2 million signing bonus, I'm good, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's why it's a steal. For, for those of you who maybe aren't as familiar, if you're new to baseball and you don't know how contracts work or whatever, this is how I look at it, okay? This is my thing, right? I boil it all the way down to like what's going on at the lowest level. The team, if he works out, it's a killer deal for the team. If he doesn't work out, it's not that expensive for the team. And 1.76 million AAV. That's not bad. If it no. doesn't work out for this kid, it's a great deal for him still. And if it does work out, it's still a great deal for him because it pushes him through all the arbitration garbage and he still has options and there's more money involved. There's like there's no way either team loses. I would love to see more contracts structured this way where the ownership and the player can agree and be like, let's do this, man. Let's let's spin this wheel and see what happens. Right. So the Mariners did this with Evan White. He was supposed mm -hmm. to be the first baseman of the future. Yeah. Um, but man, that dude, that poor guy, like he won a gold glove in the COVID season as a rookie. Yeah. But he has not been healthy since then. He just hasn't been able to stay on the field. He's been getting paid though because he signed this this deal before he made his debut. So yeah. he's set up, and the Mariners are like, we have this dead, this, this dead money, right? But at the same time, it's really not that much in the grand scheme right. of things. Mm -hmm. So, so he wins. They were win they were winning because they were getting a Gold Glove first baseman on a bargain. But now it's like, okay, it's just kind of there. But if he does get back and get healthy, it's like they've had to account for that depth. So now it's like he's gravy. Right? Oh yeah, if he comes back, comes back and gets healthy. Like that's great. But even if he comes back and gets healthy and they trade him away, the assumptive costs are minimal. Yeah. So he, yeah, he, he is, benefits everybody in the trade situation. Yeah. I think this is fantastic for Colt Keith. He's set up. He doesn't have to worry about anything. Like you said, going into arbitration because there are some guys, the relationship with their team gets damaged during arbitration. He doesn't have to worry about any of that. Nope. In 2023 in minor league baseball, again, he went from double A to triple A last season. He hit 306, 38 doubles, 27 homers, 101 RBIs. He had a 320. Uh, 
That's a 932 OPS. Sorry, I got a typo in there. And at one <laughs> one day, he hit for the cycle, going six for six, two homers, seven RBI games. That was at a double A level. Let's give him that. But still, a cycle is nothing to bat your eyes at. And uh, I, I think it's cool. Six for six, two homers and seven RBIs at any level. That's fantastic day. Yeah. And so he's um, he's 22. So by the time this this contract ends, he'll be 28, 29 at the earliest. And then you add three more years potentially on there. He's into his early 30s. I I think is there an option in there after the sixth year? There is. That is? So yeah. if, if he lives up to this deal, I'm sure he'll opt out and go get more money. And probably possibly from the Tigers, depending on how things right. go. I hope but, so. Yeah. But no, he's Dude. In, yeah. Baseball family, right. I'm into long term deals. I love deals where hometown hero status is established. That's like my thing, right? I want old school deals like that. I want guys staying in the same place for a really long time and living up to the to the dream. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's my thing. This was exciting for me. 